Hey YouTube, what's up? This is Ben from shouldigetit.com and this is the 2021 Toyota Corolla Hybrid. Now, a couple weeks back, I drove the Toyota Corolla hatchback with a six-speed manual, the XSE model, and this is very different than that. I have averaged over 46 miles to the gallon in the week that I've driven this car, and if you're looking at a Prius and you want something that's the better looking cousin of the Prius, definitely check out the Corolla Hybrid, which you can get for less than $25,000. One of the reasons for that is that this car only comes in Toyota's LE trim, which is kind of the basic entry level trim. So the only option when you configure one is blind spot monitoring. It's $500 for blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alert. The backup camera is standard. Apple CarPlay is standard. Radar cruise control and lane keeping assist is standard. You can't get heated seats. The only, only, only option is blind spot monitoring. And if you want a two tone interior or this all black interior. But for now, let me tell you what surprised me. One, it was louder than I expected. When you get on it, when it's not in the electric vehicle mode, which there's a button for, it actually gets pretty loud because the gas engine only puts out 121 horsepower and 105 pound feet of torque. So this car can actually get pretty loud when you're trying to speed up, but when you're coasting or cruising or in traffic, the car is very, very quiet as you'd expect. Secondly, the rear leg room. I am five foot eight. I'm sitting comfortably in the seat right now. I could sit behind myself with no problem. There's actually a decent amount of knee room for myself. And there's also a very low transmission tunnel in the rear. So you can actually fit three adults pretty decently. I did find that the center armrest was a little bit strange because when you open it, it doesn't hold at all. It just flops straight down to the seat. And I guess it would work as a bottle holder, but if you have cups in there with no top, it might spill your drink out. Now, another thing is the Apple CarPlay. My cousin actually rented this car and he told me, I'm surprised it doesn't have CarPlay. It has this big touchscreen. And I told him to use the USB port in the front and he said no. So this car does have two USB ports up front. One is in the center console where you have your armrest and there's a USB port there. You can charge your phone, it works fine. There's also a regular power outlet for your cigarette adapter type accessories, but it doesn't connect to Apple CarPlay. There is a hidden USB port under the dash next to the little phone cubby area where you have to plug in your phone to use CarPlay. I mean, it works, CarPlay's nice, Android Auto is nice, but I was a little bit disappointed that you have to have the wire here in your phone cubby. It'd be nice if either one of the ports worked. Overall, if you're looking for a hybrid that gets 52 miles to the gallon combined, if you're doing a lot of city driving, I'd highly recommend the Corolla Hybrid. For 25 grand, if you're a gig worker, if you're doing something like you know Uber Eats or your Uber driving, Postmates, Grubhub, whatever, I think this would be a great car, especially with gas now being over $4 per gallon here in Los Angeles. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and now let's get to driving. You're probably wondering how the trunk space is. So before we actually get to driving it, let's take a look. This is a carry on sized backpack. You could fit four five or six of them, no problem. And if you're just going on a trip by yourself or you have a couple of empty seats in the back, you just simply hit a button. The seats come down and then you can have a lot of cargo room. So it's actually a pretty usable car. I like it. Let's start with the gas mileage. So I've been getting 47.4 miles to the gallon, which I'm very impressed with. Of course, that's kind of what you'd expect with a hybrid. It's very close to Prius numbers. And let's see when I speed up, it turns the gas engine on seamlessly. That's 40, that's 50 miles an hour. So the one thing that I noticed with this car is when I think hybrid or electric vehicle, I think really quiet, but when you have the gasoline engine going in here, which is a 1.8 liter four cylinder, it's actually pretty noisy. So at slow speeds, of course, when you're at 1000, 2000 RPM, you don't hear much. But if you want it to speed up, if you want to pass somebody or you're merging onto the freeway, you'll hear that when I put my foot down, the car is actually pretty loud inside because that gas engine has to try really hard in order to get the car up to speed. Now, speaking of the gas engine, you can now see and hear that it is off. So if you look over here, it is at zero RPMs. And if you look in the center screen, I've changed it so now we can see where the power is coming from. And it is the power actually coming into the battery through the regenerative braking and kind of coasting system. So you'll see that as I brake, it's gonna continue giving power there. And then as I start going, you're gonna see that center screen start showing that the battery will start to power the car as we're going at slow speed and then the engine will turn on seamlessly. So in terms of the driving, it's very interesting because it can go full electric in the EV mode and there's a button for that, but I'll show you guys in a moment. There's oftentimes 
not the possibility to use EV mode. So you'll see I speed up, 10 miles an hour, the gas engine kicked on. I'm going less than 20 miles an hour. If I hit the EV button, EV mode, unavailable, speed range exceeded. Okay, what if I slow down below 20? So we're doing 19, 17, okay, there we go. And then I accelerate just the slightest bit and it deactivates um, the EV mode because it says I hit the accelerator too hard and to get more power, it needs to turn on the gas engine. So this EV mode button is kind of useless. And then there are actually different driving modes. So we're in eco right now, now we're in regular. So you can see that with kind of the blue lighting on the gauge cluster. And it feels just a little bit more powerful. I definitely feel it. And then there's power. And in power mode, it speeds up okay. And it actually does decently well. So if you're trying to pass someone, you'd almost want to turn it into power mode and keep it there. So I'll show you guys again. I will stop at a red light and do like a zero to 60 and we'll see. So this, in terms of zero to 60, takes about two seconds longer than the gas version, but the gas Corolla is not fast either. And also it gets about 20 miles per gallon more and it doesn't cost all that much more than the gas model. And that's because you can only get the Corolla hybrid in the lowest trim, which is the Toyota LE trim. So you cannot get heated seats in here. You have a manual trunk, which is manual on the regular Corolla anyways. There's no you know, stitching in the seats. You can get two-tone seats. This is the full black interior, but you can get two-tone. Keyless entry is standard here and also push to start in the hybrid. So that's kind of nice. You also do get brake hold. So if you have brake hold on, hopefully you can see I have lifted my right leg. And now with my leg up, it's actually holding the brake for me. And so, um, sorry about the microphone there. It's holding the brake for me. And now when I tap the accelerator, it will start to go. And there's also a little symbol that you should have seen on the gauge screen that says brake hold. So just to show you that up top, it says hold. And so now if I come to a complete stop, it's gonna say hold on the bottom right. There we go right there, so near the engine temps, it says hold, and I can take my foot off of the brake, and now the car is fully stopped. So you'll see we're at zero RPM, and the nice part is that the hybrid system works really seamlessly. So you don't have to think about when the gas engine is gonna turn on, when it's gonna turn off. If you're not speeding up quickly, the car is very, very quiet. And then even if I turn the fan on to full blast here, you'll see that it's not very loud. So let's do a zero to 60 once this person moves. We're in power mode with the fan on. It's 30, 40, 50, and I'm gonna slow down. And we're coming to a red light. So as you can see, I started coasting and the gauge went down to zero. So it's super seamless. As I was just talking about, I'm gonna turn this fan off. We do have single climate zone controls. So you just set your temperatures here on the left and then your fan speed on the right. You have your windshield uh, defrost and rear defrost buttons. And then you have two cup holders here a little center armrest that slides back and forth, and you have a little cubby area right there. Sorry that that was loud. But overall, it's a pretty nice car. So driving it is very easy, and it's also very light, which if you've watched my videos before, you know that I love light cars. And what I mean by that is you can turn it with one finger. So as we slow down, the steering actually gets a little bit lighter, so that if I, let's say, put it into eco mode, and now we're gonna take a right turn here, I can just take one finger, and with one finger, I can turn this wheel. So we have a pedestrian who's crossing right now, but with just one finger, I can take the car and turn it through a really sharp turn. And then as we speed up, it's actually gonna get heavier. So now if I push down with one finger, it's not gonna move the car as far. So overall, I'm pretty pleased with the Corolla Hybrid as a city car. It actually gets better gas mileage in the city than it does on the freeway. So if you do a lot of city driving, this is a great option. So if you are a DoorDash driver or an Uber driver or Postmates, Grubhub, whatever, you use one of those services and you do deliveries for them or Instacart or uh, TaskRabbit, whatever, this is actually a great car because you're gonna get 50 plus miles to the gallon. And if you're on the freeway, you're still getting 40 plus, probably 45 plus miles. And as I mentioned, I drove it through the canyons in Malibu and it was still getting 46.2 or 0.3 miles per gallon. So I'm pretty impressed with it overall. It does have Apple CarPlay, it has Android Auto as well. The sound system de is decent. The one bummer kind of from driving the Corolla XSE hatchback before this is you cannot get heated seats in this car because the hybrid only allows you to get the LE trim. So you can't get the higher trim level with the hybrid. It's either gas and nicer interior or not as nice of an interior and hybrid with 20 more miles to the gallon and two seconds slower zero to 60. Overall, if you're looking for a very fuel efficient car, definitely take a look at the Corolla Hybrid. I know I've been doing a lot of Toyota and Lexus vehicles lately. 
just a huge thanks to them for letting me borrow the cars to film. If you have interest in other cars, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I have some vehicles coming from other manufacturers as well, along with more Toyotas too. So I appreciate you watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Thumbs down if you hated it. And subscribe if you really loved it. Thanks. Peace.